If you've been investing your time, energy, effort, and money into tech certifications, but you haven't landed a new job, you may be wondering, what the heck is wrong with me? Well, you're in luck, Cyber Heroes, because in this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons as to why your certification has not helped you land your dream job yet. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Hey, Cyber Heroes, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Boyd Clewis, six-figure tech career coach and internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help people upgrade their jobs to a six-figure tech career. And if you wanna join me on this journey, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the red bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. All right, Cyber Heroes, buckle up because we're about to jump into the five reasons of why your certification has not helped you land the job. And so it's only right if I tell you a quick story. It's story time, guys. Okay, guys, so back earlier in my career, when I was moving from IT analyst to IT security specialist, I was very interested in vulnerability and risk management. So I'm working at this small software company and I am running the Qualys vulnerability scan, which is why one of my top ranked videos on the channel is about starting a cybersecurity career using the free, yes, free Qualys training, which is a vulnerability management scanner, which scans systems for vulnerabilities, then reports on it so teams can take action and provide remediation. So I'm working at this software company. I'm not making a lot of money. At this point in my career, I'm making about $60,000. And I know personally that I have this skill set to make more money. So this is what I did. I went and got the Qualys Guard certification, and then I got the CISSP. And the greatest thing at the time happened to me. Soon after, I got the CISSP, the Qualys certification, I updated my LinkedIn profile, my Dice profile, and then boom, I get the phone call of my life. American Airlines, the largest airline in the world, wants me to come and interview for a vulnerability management specialist position. And I was super duper excited, man. That pay rate was about $55 per hour, which was a lot more than I was making at the time because I was making $30 per hour. I interview at American Airlines. I show up with my suit on, got my tie, looking good, smelling good, fresh. And I have a conversation with the hiring manager and I believed it went very well. I talked about what I had done in Qualys and then I talked about the certifications that I had. I was like, hey, I'm a CISSP, which means I understand security principles. I understand security frameworks. I got the Qualys Guard training. I nailed it, right? And so at the end of that interview, he shakes my hand, I leave. And then soon after I get a phone call from the recruiter that set me up with the interview. I'm expecting this to be a job offer because I crushed this interview. So the interviewer tells me, hey, great job with the interview. They're not going to move forward with you because you don't have the skills that they're looking for or the experience. I was like, what? It made zero sense to me, guys, because I looked at the position that American Airlines was hiring for and I looked at my skill set, my ability and my certifications and it did not add up, y'all. So I was heated. I was 24. I'm older and wiser at 35 years old now. I can look back and understand what the challenge was. So if you're taking notes, which I hope you are, reason number one why your IT certification isn't working for you is this, listen to me closely. The lack of practical experience, guys. I cannot tell you how much more important the actual hands-on experience is compared to actually having the certification. So here's a couple things that I need you to understand. Having a certification is not the end all to getting a job. Getting a certification is actually extremely easy. As a matter of fact, you could pay someone online to go take and pass the certification on your behalf and it passes the authenticity test. It happens every day. So the certification is already devalued. And the other thing is, just because you're certified doesn't mean that you can actually do the work. That means that you understood theory and you knew enough to pass an exam. It's not the same thing as being able to go to a company and add value to them because that's why they hire you. When they know that you can do the work, you have a proven track record of doing the work, that's how you get hired. And you can articulate your skill set. 
You can't articulate something that you don't have. So again, in this interview, the things that I talked about was how certified I was, how I was the man for the job because I had the credentials, which brings me to number two. Overemphasis of your certifications will actually run hiring managers away. A lot of people could have the skills that could get them the job, but instead of talking about their skills, they put all the eggs in the basket of the cert and that's what they talk about. But what you have to understand is your certification does not solve that company's problem that they're hiring for, your skill set does. And so if you spend your time in the job interview talking about your education, your credentials, you are actually digging yourself a hole because those things solve no problems. The way this goes is the company is going to hear about your previous experience, how you added value, what you've done, and in turn, they will assume that you can bring that same value to their company to solve the problem. But if you are only talking about the certification you have, you are not communicating the value that you can bring to the company. Therefore, you will not get hired. So it's important to lean heavily on the skills and less on the cert. You should only use the cert as a conversation starter to get to the interview. So if you're having an interview, it shouldn't be a topic of discussion because it's already done its job. Number three is outdated or irrelevant certifications. In the interview that I went to with American Airlines, my CISSP and the Koala certification were actually right on point with this job that I was interviewing for. But what I've seen is many times people will go and get IT certifications that have no relevance to the position that they're going for and they wonder why they don't get a job. It doesn't make sense for you to go get a CISSP certification if you want to be a pen tester because a CISSP certification is about information systems and security management. This is an executive function. If I was going to be doing pen testing, I would look at things like the OSCP, right? Something that is actually geared toward that specific skill. Just because you can get a certification doesn't mean that it's going to align with the job. So the recipe for success is I get the skills, then I get the certification because it's actually a lot easier to get the cert when you've actually been doing the work and you get the skills. And then I align my resume with an opportunity that fits my skill set. What I've seen too many tech professionals do is show up to any and every interview that they can get, even if it doesn't master skills. That is actually not a good thing to do because you come off as someone that's un organized and doesn't understand their skill set. So you don't want to do that. All right, cyber heroes, it is a great time to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you're getting a ton of value from this video, let's continue. So if you listen to what I told you at the beginning of this video, I said that when American Airlines called me to come to the interview, the recruiters called me. If you want to land a job, you need to put yourself in position to be found. I never applied for this job interview at American Airlines, even though I didn't get the job. As a matter of fact, none of the jobs that I've ever had paying over $100,000 did I submit an application for. Even my job that paid me over 200,000. It came from networking. So number four, the reason why most certifications don't work for them is because they don't work. The individual, the tech professional, you have poor job search strategies. When you should be using networking, use your social media network, LinkedIn, get out to networking events and meet people because people hire people, not robots. Let me tell you, this is probably what you're doing right now. All day, you're just sitting there, submitting these applications, getting rejected notices after rejected notices. If you are even hearing anything back from the company and then you're frustrated, wonder why you wasted your time with the certification. But I'm telling you how to overcome that. You need to get out of the chair, close the computer and get out and meet somebody. Hiring managers, you never know who you can meet by going to a networking event. So get on Eventbrite, go to Meetup, look for local tech mixers get out and meet people. Be honest about where you are in your life and your skill set and what you want to accomplish and just let them know that you're looking to add value with a new opportunity. And believe it or not, when you have conversations like this, the certifications don't even come up. It's not even important because most companies will mold you into the tech professional that they want 
if you have a little personality and you're willing to listen and learn. So you have to get out, network, because your network can determine your net worth. And this brings me to number five, weak resume and interview skills, all right? It doesn't matter how good your resume is if you cannot speak to the things that are on your resume. It's called congruency. If I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile, if I'm looking at your resume, if I'm looking at your DICE profile, and it says that you're like a senior person, you got this certification, you got this and that skill. When I talk to you, I expect you to be able to share your experience with leveraging the skills and the technologies that you've listed in your resume. The challenge is most people cannot. And here's an example. I've seen actual resumes of people wanting to break into cybersecurity in a vulnerability management position like I interviewed for American Airlines. And it would say something like this on their resume, ran vulnerability scanner. That's horrible. You are never going to get an interview with bullet points on your resume that said ran vulnerability scanner. And the reason why most people are conditioned to put what they did on the resume, but what you did on the resume is not what gets you hired. It's the benefit what that you provided the company is what gets you hired. So I would replace that statement with I ran vulnerability scanner to I removed 500 vulnerabilities from critical systems while operating the Qualys vulnerability scanner. So I've communicated to the company what impact I had on the business and I'm also letting them know how I did that with what technology. And when I'm in the interview, I can talk about the process that I went about, how I downloaded the reports, how I analyzed the data, how I worked with teams to explain what needed to be fixed, and then I rescan to verify that the systems were actually remediated. Everything becomes a talking point, but if you have a weak resume, you're never going to get to the interview. And if you don't have congruency with your resume, you're not gonna do well in the interview because you can't speak to it. It is important to be honest with where you are in your skill set. There's too many people that are going for high level positions that don't have the background to support it. It's okay to start small, develop your skill set, then go big. Everybody's not gonna walk directly into a six figure tech role. And it's gonna be to your detriment if you do, if you can't speak to the skill set that you have because you won't last long. All right, Cyber Hero, since I love you, I actually have a bonus one for you. Here's number six. Most people that get certified don't get hired because this certification is actually stacking the cards against you. If you were to go and ask any tech professional, their primary advice to give you to get into tech is to go get the CompTIA trifecta. CompTIA A+, Network+, Security+, then you'll get a job. Like, how does that formula work? When in reality, it is A+, Network+, Security+, App, 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 low ball job. But they don't tell you that. So here's what you need to understand. There are millions upon millions of people that are getting this advice and going to get the same certifications. So what you're doing is you are actually creating competition against yourself. And I actually know several people in the industry when they're looking for tech talent, they will actually exclude anyone's resume that mentions CompTIA. So what I recommend doing is forgetting the whole certification thing. Now remember, there's a difference between skill and certified, but move into a specialized space in tech where certifications aren't required and that you can learn the skills as you grow your career and your income. And so what I did is after I was disappointed with this job interview at American Airlines, I went back to my first passion, which is cybersecurity assurance and specifically PCI compliance, which is credit card data security. 18 months after I had that failed interview at American Airlines, I was actually called back this time to interview for the senior security architect role as the PCI architect. And I landed the position and I earned a salary over $150,000 without a college degree, just a high school diploma. Yes, I had a few certifications, but when I went back to this interview, I was speaking from the skill set that I had been learning and I spoke to the business needs and how my skill set and my ability was going to solve their problems and I was able to get the job. And so this is what I've been doing for the past five or six years online. I've been teaching people just like you that want to upgrade their jobs into six figure tech careers, how to become payment security specialist to remove the competition 
and make six figures in tech, regardless of their background, regardless of having college degrees or IT certifications. So if that's you, I invite you to apply to join the Baxter Clues Training Academy. You can go to www.boydclues.com forward slash GRC. Check out our case study, then submit your application to join the academy. You schedule a call with our career advisor and they will give you the direct strategy for you to take to become a six-figure tech specialist in just months, not years, in just months. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to take your career to the next level. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.